Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Second attempt at this subject because the first video was 40 minutes long. One of the side effects of cooking for myself is I'm not getting all of that horrible fast food grease, which was what was giving me the cough. But now I just talk fucking forever and especially recently, I know it's kind of uh, strange to say I'm still angry about the murder that occurred two and a half weeks ago, but I am, I'm still angry about it. So I try to talk about one subject and then I just rant for 20 minutes and it's um it's not helpful so this is comics pro it's a retailer organization they held a survey last year and um, it's a uh, it's not good in fact it's worse than anyone imagined so Wes from thinking critical did a fantastic video on this um, I'm just gonna you know the Venn diagram, there's not a 100% crossover between two, our two audiences, and this is def definitely information that needs to get out there. So they uh, did a poll of all these retailers. Um, for some reason, they went into demographics. Like, the demographics of retailers don't matter. The demographics of customers do, but not retailers. Uh, so it's, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Sorry, <laughs> kind of lost my... Uh, so uh, the majority of uh, comic store retailers are Caucasian males. 10% of retailers identify as people of color. 11% female or non-binary. 10% uh, LGBTQ+. And of course, you can, like the 10% that's gay could also be the 10% that's people of color. It, you know, it's gonna be, you understand what I'm saying. Um, uh, most of the retailers are older. So this is the part that like, really just like so overall sales were down in 2023 the majority of comic book stores 69 percent noise uh reported lower gross sales in 2023 than in 2022 a bright spot it's not it's not a bright spot at all um however is that 22 percent of stores reported higher sales in 2023 than in 2022 that's the only information we're going to get on the supposed bright spot because the bright spot is the reality is their competitor down the street went out of business and then when people said like oh where do I get Amazing Spider-Man I've been buying every copy since I was in high school 30 years ago they say well Eddie down the street I talked to him and they're like okay yeah you know it's a little out of my way but it's not that far so they say the higher sales in 22 percent of stores but they don't tell you how much, which to me thinks is probably like one to 5%. So um, when comparing 2023 sales to 2019 pre-pandemic, uh, fewer stores experienced a sales decline for that period. Uh, so then, so it's 69% comparing 2023 to 2022, 69% had lower sales. If you do 2023 to 2019, it's 54%, but that's because the prices are higher so um, but this is the one that's just really just absolutely devastating sales of new comics were down in 73 percent of comics in 2023 versus 2022 while graphic novel sales were down in 65 percent of comic shops with a decline of between one percent to fifty percent reported so there are stores out there who are selling half as many comics as they did the year before, 2023 compared to 2022. So you might say, what happened? Well, you know, we had the pandemic. We had a lockdown. They had pencils down. Although for me, 2020 was my best sales ever. It was freaking insane. Um, it was so much I had to get on a payment plan for the IRS for like two years because I had this freaking massive tax bill uh, but I finally paid that off last December um, uh, so I'm good now but it was it was a massive tax bill because my sales were so high um, but uh, they shut down uh, diamond collapsed and then they started to rebuild uh, uh, although the comeback was not uh, better than the setback as uh, uh, diamond was saying but 2022 it was kind of weird because people were still getting that that COVID check, 
even for a few months there after the lockdown ended. So people were able to go to stores, they were able to go out, and they had this extra cash. It was really cool. So sales were really good in 2022, and then people read the books. And it's just, this person's gay, this person's bi, this person's trans. Uh, let's kind of hint, we're gonna try and make Bruce Wayne bisexual. Oh no, he was just fake, but they're gonna keep trying. So it was just gay shit, that's, that's all it was. It was just a bunch of gay shit and spamming out events and variants to get money from divorced dentists. Um, but then things just plummeted. And the thing that really pisses me off about this poll is not only do they hide data, like what was the increase in sales at the 22% that had higher sales? They're hiding that. Um, that apparently no questions were given to the retailers do you remember that was that there was that retailers roundup that Heidi McDonald did last December where they identified quality of the books, the stories, and enthusiasm for comics that that was a major hurdle. And in like a 10,000 word article, Heidi was like, "Yeah, that's important, which means you're allowed to talk about that now, but we don't have time to talk about it." And it's 4 months later and nothing's happened so um, that 40 minute video was really angry but it would have taken me all day to edit it and I need to work on books I had a good uh, day yesterday I uh, reviewed two uh, lettering passes on bad seed the devil dog backup story from the jawbreakers contingency I also did a speak through which is I've already written the dialogue for the jawbreakers contingency now I'm gonna speak it out loud uh, to see if it sounds natural or dramatic or everyone's using the same voice. And this leads to a lot of rewriting. I was also able, I'm very excited, to use ChatGPT, calm down, calm down, unclench, breathe. Uh, what was that from Bad Boys 2? Uh, your pressure points in your ears, squeeze them. I didn't have ChatGPT write it. I had a scene where someone had an x-ray and they had a brain bleed and I needed more technical jargon than brain bleed or brain damage. So it's an intracerebral hematoma that's causing a midline shift that is leading to erratic uh, behavior and bouts of paranoia. That sounds a lot better than uh, the Vida Ayala-esque, his brain don't so good. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, you know, uh, oh, I forgot to, uh, to show this. This is a, uh, a retailer who went out of business and every, because I read all of, the, they're, they're almost always Facebook posts. There is always a don't hurt me Heidi clause in all of these. They all have to say, hey, it had nothing to do with the comics or the creators or their behavior or any digital lynch mobs that may have allegedly driven one of their peers to a suicide that was identified as a murder in the suicide note of the guy who killed himself. But as they say, there is no secret society of supervillains to blame. It actually is. Just like with Ed Piscor's suicide note, where he uh, identified his alleged murderers, like we know the names of the secret society of supervillains. It's Rich Johnston, it's Alex DeCampi, it's Heidi McDonald, it's Tess Fowler. These are destroyers. A friend of mine described them as the Whisperers, which sounds really cool. It sounds like some like Tolkien-esque villains. Um, but uh, kind of similar to the Ed Piscor murder, like this wasn't sudden, it wasn't acute, it wasn't abrupt. It happened slowly and everyone saw it happen and Nobody really said anything. Mark Millar can't be the only guy who says something 90% of times when something goes egregiously wrong. Like, y'all have to... I mean... I have a friend, he always likes to brainstorm, like, oh, we could try this, we could try this, we could try this. And I just, I just want to say, like, man, it's like, it's too late. I saw this TikTok yesterday. I'm going to keep an eye on the time so I don't make 
this video 40 minutes as well. What do you like? Oh, 10 minutes in. Okay, shoot for 15. I saw a TikTok of a, of a Chinese, I'm just going to call him the ruler. I don't remember what his official title was. But he, um, he uh, you know, he kind of started from nothing and then he made his way up and had a huge army and was doing pretty good for a while. And then, you know, he got captured and killed and cut up into pieces and burned. And then the ashes were put into a cannon so they could not be collected into an urn for a proper burial, according to his religion, which was Christianity. And that's the point we're at. I described the industry as being shredded from within, and then I described it as like shredded chicken, and we're trying to turn it back into a chicken. But we're at this point. The industry has been killed, it's been cut up, it's been burnt. The ashes have been collected and put into a cannon, which is just about to be lit so it can be fired. And the ashes are just caught in the, uh, the winds and driven out to sea. Like, it's, it was too late five years ago. Right now, it's just like, oh, are we going to have a wake? Are we going to have a funeral? You know, you can literally just say, I don't want a funeral. I have a will. This is not a joke. I literally put the quote from, from freaking Danny DeVito's character in It's Always Sunny, where I said, just throw me in a dumpster. Like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't want, I don't want some lame-ass funeral. And uh, I think we're at that point with comics where it's just like, are we going to have a wake? Are we going to have a funeral? Are we just going to throw it in the dumpster like Danny DeVito's? Uh, character in It's Always Sunny uh, wanted. I mean, it's damn man, this I mean, this stuff is uh, uh, Rob Guillory did a really great video uh, a couple days ago about cancel culture and he was like he's like, it's just really dark. They literally, every time you close down your shop, every time you literally pack up all of your hopes and dreams, you have to make sure that you're staying on Heidi McDonald's good side. You have to have the please Heidi don't hurt me paragraph in your Facebook post where you say that you went out of business for no reason just randomly on a Tuesday. Has nothing to do with the product. The, well, we're not gonna say the product's fine because we're just not gonna talk about the product at all. Let's assume it's fine. You always don't talk about things that are fine. Um, it's very, there's a very interesting way to tell the truth uh, from a lie. The truth you can tell like just once. Lies have to be repeated. So the propagandists in comics, they have to enforce with threats, with intimidation, with bullying, because they're not just closing down their shop. Like if you've been in retail in comics for 21 years, Comics is your friend group, it's your peer group, it's your found family. And we've seen how they viciously attack anyone who doesn't spout the propaganda. We saw it happen to various retailers last fall. We saw it happen very specifically to Glenn last December. And um, this is a situation we find ourselves in. Partial data about an absolute collapse of an industry released uh, the same month as the guy who promoted read more comics was murdered according to him in his suicide note so uh, I'm not here to bring you hope I think it's actually impossible uh, the best you can hope for is that there's 80 plus years of good comics back issues to read Asia and Europe specifically are continuing to produce good books. If you want to produce work, new work, or you want to read new work, that is possible, but you basically need to do what... Is the, is the new Walking Dead series, is it good? Because I saw Rick Grimes is a soldier, so I like stuff like that. So I was like, oh, I might actually watch that. If it's good, I'll watch it. But apparently they find out that a few, I think like three... Um, 
major metropolitan areas, as they say, survived, walled themselves off. I think some of them have like vague alliances and some of them have beefs, but like it's literally going to be like walled cities and independent fiefdoms. Just just find your spot, your homestead, defend it viciously against attackers and uh, just do the best work you can. Um, but this whole, hey, it's Wednesday, I'm going to go to the comic shop and there will probably be something cool. Bro, it ain't 1988 anymore. Shit, it's not even uh, uh, 2010 when you could still go there and consistently get, I think that's the year that the absolute X-Men Xenogenesis came out. I just read that. I'm probably going to do a whole video on that. That was so freaking but I remember being on active duty in the army and going to the library or going to the shop at and they had a whole section for American graphic novels and just you could just pick a random Marvel or DC book and it was good. It wasn't just shoving someone's politics in your face. The Twitter was barely a thing so they couldn't use it to push people to suicide. Those days are gone those days are gone and don't tell me about dog man because dog man is just a kid's book that they're going to read they're going to be into that series for a couple years and then they're just going to start watching netflix shows or anime like that's not they make it like oh this is the new comics no it's 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 a face it's literally a face uh so you've turned something that people will have as a hobby for decades their whole life and you've turned it into a phase that lasts from second grade to fifth grade or whatever is the the demographic for people who read dog man um but yeah it's over <laughs> killed chopped up burnt ashes collected put into a cannon that's just about to be lit and now they want to start Right here, he's like, this is the first poll we've had from this retailer organization. First one? Feels like that's something you should have done the first year of this organization. Not like a decade or two later. But it's all over. <laughs> it's all... What are you going to do? Grab the, the individual dust out of the air and collect it into an urn? Like, no. He's, he's dead. He's chopped. He's burned. And they fired his ashes, or they're about to, out of a cannon. It's over. It's a wrap. Why are you still trying to appease freaking Heidi McDonald? There is no secret society of supervillains to blame. There actually is. There is. We know their names. We know all of their names. All of it. We know every single one. And it happened slowly over a decade. And now it's way too fucking late. But uh, but what does Heidi say at the beginning of this article? It's a hard business. It's a lot harder when it's being destroyed from within. Um, uh, I think there's also a line of, uh, it's not all bad news. No, it's all bad news. That's all anyone has. It's all bad news. Buy my book. <laughs> We just passed 3,000 backers, which is actually amazing. Um, uh, this isn't a floppy. This is a graphic novel. Marvel and DC these days will rarely have any graphic novel that sells 3,000 copies. I mean, actually to customers. Like, here's a book that you order. Not it goes to a shop and it sits there on the shelf. But like actual customers buying it. Bro, like there's barely any mainstream books. That have sales like this so very grateful for this i know you're gonna love this book when you get it which should be very soon and now i'm going to go get back to work because i don't even have to edit this one because i'm not eating fried fast food and i'm not coughing all the time and uh, stumbling over my words so um anyway uh thanks for watching bye i'm thirsty though